Matt Lenehan for Boxing Social in association with William Hill Empire Fight Store. Delighted to be joined by former world champion Joe Cardina. Uh, I know that must sound a bit weird because you never lost that belt in the ring, but the road to her being two times is underway. Um, you look in very good condition in this gym. You've been training away today with Tony Sims. How are you feeling, Joe? I'm tired today, I'm not going to lie. I've had a hard week, but um, listen, this all puts me in good stead for the 22nd of April. Um, I just keep pushing through. Obviously, as you've seen the session, it's, it's fucking grueling. Um, and that's a Tuesday, Thursday session. But it's getting down to the nitty gritty now. And, and this is why the training you've seen today, this is why we're so conditioned. This is why we're able to do 12 rounds piece of this. And this is why we won't be beat on fitness. So, yeah, it's been a tough week, but we're pushing on. Yeah, I can attest to this. I've seen things today that, yeah, makes a lot of sense in terms of how you guys all have good engines. Like, ridiculous. Like, the, the level of training you were doing down there, it's, it's an eye-opener. For boxing fans who don't see this side of it, it really is an eye-opener. Look, um, you're fighting for a belt you've never lost before. I caught you in Abu Dhabi, and at that time you were a bit upset with the length of time that the IBF at that point gave you for this injury because you were genuinely injured there's nothing you could have done do you, do you feel a bit hard done by because of what happened because you never lost it in the ring and you, you, you did say look I am injured and this is when I'll potentially be back you feel like you feel a bit hard done by yeah I do but I, like I said now I've done, I've done numerous interviews um, since I've made peace with it now and it's it's just about like, like I said and like you just said I never lost the title in, in the ring. So, yeah, I'm going in as a challenger and I'm a former world champion, but in my head, I'm still going into this fight. In my head, as a world champion, I've got the confidence of being a world champion. And I believe I'm the best super featherweight on, a, on the planet and I, I'm going to show it on the 22nd. What would it mean to you to become two-time? Obviously, you never planned it to be this way. You know, stuff happens in the sport of boxing, but to become two-time world champion and to do it again back in Wales, back in Cardiff, you might not ever recreate that special night against um, Okawa in the, um, in the in the arena, that knockout, that perfectly timed shot. That was stuff that you dream about. You might not be able to replicate that, but the chance there to win the belt, how special would that be for you? Yeah, it'd be massive. Obviously, being a two-time world champion, I'd be... Um, very few people in Britain to, to do that so um, yeah it, it's it'd be a nice feeling and yeah if I don't get a knockout or if I do I can't see it uh, topping what happened in in June um, last year uh, against Ogawa it's it's a it's a moment in my life that probably will never be topped um, yeah it's it doesn't matter what I do in my career now. That was a special moment, and um, will live me will live me f till the day I die. So, it's one for the history books. But your opponent, you're fighting. You saw him up close and personal. I were there witnessing Rakimov versus Alpha Barrett. What do you make of Rakimov? He was built up as this um, sort of monster. Everyone, Freddie Roach, everyone speaks so highly of him. What do you make of him? Seeing him up close and. I take it you'll have obviously seen mistakes that he's made. But what do you make of him as a fighter? Yeah, he's a good fighter. He's a world champion. Um, won a vacant belt mine, but he's still a world champion. He's yeah. top. He's he, he was all, always highly ranked, um, and he's like myself. He, was, he had a good amateur pedigree, and um, yeah, he's fit, strong, tough. But I've always said it: you have to be a little bit more than that to beat me. You've got to have a, that little bit of something, a little bit of something, and that's that little something is special. And I just don't believe he he has it. Um, like I said, he's fit, he's strong, he's tough, but you have to be more than just that to be. Do you believe that's what separates you from other fighters in the division, that you are good, but you just have that little bit extra? That You just mentioned there to beat you, it has to be something special. Do you believe you have that something special? Because you're going to be wanting to, and I ain't looking past this guy, I know you're definitely not after seeing you today, but you're going to be wanting to unify and look at other things after this. So have you got that, that bit special? Yeah, of course. I. I've always believed that, and, I, and I've said I've said it from from when I first turned pro. Let me have my my, my learning fights, and, um, and when I started stepping into the titles and my ten rounds, which was after my sixth or seventh fight, uh, ten and twelve round fights, I said just get me a world title. And when I went in the office, I said to uh, to Eddie, if, um, it was me, Eddie, Frank, and Charlie Sims. 
I said, you just get me the world title, leave the rest to me. Just leave the rest to me. And I've, I've done exactly what I said and I've, I've done exactly what I set out to do. I've never, I've never was one for saying certain things just for the sake of it. I want to be a world champion, I'm going to be a world champion, which a lot of people do. But, but you have to believe it, you have to speak about it, you have to manifest it. Like, you got, I got my phone and if I, if I showed you my phone, on my, that's it, constant. I look at it every, every single day. So that's, that's in my head. As soon as I wake up, that's in my head. Yeah. I say on every post, two-time world champion and it's a loaded. Yeah. And I'm thinking about it constantly. I know it's, they're just words, but you, you have to speak it. You have to believe it. Yeah, yeah. And I do believe it. I've got talent. I've always been told that you've got natural talent, you're, you're fucking so talented, you're this, you're that, the other. But you have to work hard, you have to believe in yourself. And I got all of that, and I sacrificed, which is for me is the main thing. Like, everyone works hard because you work hard. You have to get yeah. up every morning, go to, the, go to work, yeah. you have to be away. But the one separate in boxing, what separates the best of the best to just the, the good and the average is sacrifice. These, these fighters don't, don't sacrifice. They're happy to stay in their comfort zone. I've lived away from my family for, what, 14, 15 years, yeah. all in all. And that's, I, I believe that's the difference. And I have that, like I said, I have that something special, that's that little bit, and it's yeah. being special. How do you deal with that mentally? I know you're driven, like you can see it in you, like you see how you, the intensity you put into your workout. How do you almost not take any feeling out of it, but stay that locked in whereas you have got family in Wales you've got kids you just mentioned who I'm sure you want to see more often than you do how do you the fighter the athlete the former world champion stay so focused where you can almost put that to one side and focus on getting the best out of yourself sacrifice is keeps you hungry and for me the main thing for me is about providing for my kids um, being able to give them everything everything they want in life I can't say I had a bad upbringing. My, my mother and my father gave me everything I needed to, yeah. uh, to keep me off the streets, to put me in the right direction, and I believe they've done that. And I want to do the same for my kids. Um, and, but I want to give them more. And then I want to give my mum and my father uh, um, a good life, a great life um, that they give to me. So, yeah, these are the little things that keep me motivated, keep me hungry, and as well as my goals was always to be a world champion. I've been, um, I've been a world champion. Yeah. Now I've set new goals. I want to become a two-time world champion. I want to unify yeah. and potentially down the line, once I unify, then undisputed. Yeah. In terms of, you can't look too far ahead. The boxing's a fickle game. One bad, one, one bad performance, one off night. You get right back where you started and you're back climbing the mountain again. Yeah. But. Is it difficult not to look at where you're going, or is it is it just this for you? You just see this and that's it. Because, like you said, some of the fighters in the division with, with belts that you're going to be wanting to pick up, is any of that cross your mind, or is it literally just one stage at a time? Or can you see two, three fights ahead? How do you how do you work it out? No, so I got goals, and I, I look at them goals. I want to be a unified champion. I want to be under the speed champion. These are the the fighters that have these belts, I'm always keeping them in sight and keeping them in my mind. But focus, when I'm training, all I think about is racking off. I'm just, and when it gets hard, when I'm on a run, racking off, what's he doing? Is he doing this? Yeah. When it gets tough, the smoke earlier, when you see me down, downstairs, that was hard what I was doing. When it was getting tough and I was thinking, oh, can't, I could think of fucking better things to do. All I kept thinking about was racking off. He's yeah. doing, He's doing more, so I'm going to do more. Yeah. So that's how, how, how I work it in my head. You told the story there about how you sat in the office, you, um, Charles Sims, Eddie Hearn, and you said, make me the fights, get me a world title shot, and I'll do the rest. What was Eddie's reaction when, you know, young Joe Cardina's walking into office, who's off the back of an outstanding uh, amateur pedigree, walking in and saying, look, you do that, I'll do the rest. Was he like, yeah, completely believing He's like, all right, well, Let's just yeah. slow down a bit. What what was his reaction? It was it, it wasn't so. I say that it was back. It wasn't at the start of my amateur career. But I, I told him at the start when I first met with him, I will be a world champion, um, and I, and that was that's my main goal is to become a world champion. But this was I think 
at the start of last year, probably yeah, beginning of last year or maybe the end of the year before. So um, he was like, yeah, I believe, uh, yeah, I know you'll be a world champion, but I don't think he really believed that I, I could do it. Yeah. Um, he might say he does, but I'm not daft. I, I've, I've fucking, yeah. I've been around. Do you get me? Yeah. Um, and I can read people very, very well. And when I said it. Yeah, he was like, yeah, no, I'm, I know you're going to be a world champion. But I don't believe he thought he thought that I was going to do it yeah. and do it the way I've done it against Ogawa. Yeah. Maybe I would have picked it one up down the line. Yeah. But the way I've done it, yeah. I've, I've got to admit, I'm not sure many of us, and this is not a disrespect to your talent or your ability. Everyone knows how good you are. Um, Ogawa came over with a bit of a reputation. We weren't sure... He was an unknown quantity, but we heard a lot about him, if you know what I mean. We're not all people see him, but oh, he's, he's a good fighter, he's a good fighter. So for you to dispatch him the way you did, I think everyone stood up and were like, holy shit, what's just happened, kind of thing. Yeah, of course, like I was saying, um, I, I boxed, like people were saying, oh yeah, knock him out, it was a lucky knockout. But then the fight before, I hit the kid the first round, he just went on his bike, he was just running, yeah. and running for his life. He just knew every time I ate him, I was hurting him. Um, and if he would have stood there, probably for a minute or two, I would have got him out of there, 100%. And in the fight before, I knocked the kids back out within a minute. Um, and then prior to that, it was lockdown. Um, obviously, at the start of lockdown, I had that my hand uh, operated on. Because yeah. before that, I had three fights with uh, two broken metacarpals. So when people are saying, oh, yeah, he can't punch, he's this, he's that. But in my first, like, I don't know how many fights, I was stopping all these journeymen, stopping all these people. I didn't stop Match of Dog because at the time, it's my f I've gone from four rounds to 12 rounder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, do I try and get him out of there or do I be smart? Now, I'm a smart fighter. I'm, my ring craft's great. And I knew what he wanted to do, he wanted to take me late. Yeah. So I just boxed within myself, won the rounds and picked it up and then stepped on it in the, the last uh, last four rounds. But yeah, going to Ogawa and then knocking him out the way I did, it was no surprise to me. And I said it, it in yeah. the interviews beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. I said, no surprise to me and there's no surprise to my team. And I said, do not be surprised if I knock him out. So when people, yeah, yeah, he's lucky, he's this, he's that. It's no luck. Me and Tony worked on that shot, that same shot that I knocked him out with, yeah. over and over and over again. Who's saying that that shot was up though? Because if you watch, if you watch how the shot was set up, I don't know if, if you're like casual and you don't maybe look at the ins and outs, but the angle at which you throw at, you didn't stand it all straight up. You dipped into it, twisted on it, put a lot of talk, and you were already, your head's already half gone out of the way in case anything's coming back. But there was a lot gone into that. So I don't listen. People are saying it's okay. I just say you, you don't really know what you look watching because yeah. it was it that sweet but you'll be looking to put a statement on against Rakimov in this fight coming up um, talk to me about Tony Sims for me one of the best traders in the country if not the best doesn't get spoke about obviously there's a lot of things going on now surrounding this gym that we're not going to go into for obvious reasons but talk to me about the effect he's had on you not just inside the ring because we can clearly see his works well with you, but the effect outside. I remember you talked on your post-fight press conference of your fight against Sagawa and said, you know, you don't get a lot of credit, but he's looked after us, not inside, but outside the ring, make sure we're okay. Is he very much like that? You know, when you go and leave you, he's technically, you're not his responsibility, but is he like, check up on your house, things, how's you sleep, are you keeping well, that kind of thing? Yeah, well, he's, he's like a father figure. Um, so like, when we're here, I live with him when I'm up here. So when I go back, this week, these next three weeks, I'm staying with John because he's he's got an Airbnb down here, so I keep him keeping him um, company. So I'm staying with John, but Tony, I live with Tony, so I see him every single day. He makes sure I'm okay, makes sure everything's fine, and yeah, we speak about things, or most mostly boxing, but he gives me advice if I'm needed on other yeah. things, whether it's to do with property, to do with yeah. this, to do with that. And he's always giving me advice. So for him, uh, for me, sorry, he's the, in boxing the best thing that ever happened, me, that happened to me. Um, and this coming to this gym is the best thing that ever happened to my career. Um, I believe he's got me to where I am today because of his boxing knowledge, um, 
yeah, I've got talent and whatever else, but I needed someone to tap into that. Yeah. I, I always had it, but I just wasn't using it. I wasn't training yeah. to the best of my ability. I was half like fucking about when I was in the amateurs. You can get away with it over three rounds, but over 10 and 12 rounds, you can't do it. So when I was down here, I was with, living with Ricky Burns and we were living with Tony. I got to learn a lot. And now Tony was like, listen, follow Ricky. Whatever Ricky does, you do. I was like, okay, no problem. So I learned a lot from Ricky. And then once Ricky's left, then Tony, he's just, he's took me to that level that I yeah. needed to be at. And I believe that when my, when my dad first come down here with me, he said, when we left, he said, this is where you need to be. Yeah. Do not go anywhere else, this is where you need to be. You mentioned he gives you advice on things like uh, property and this, that, and the other. Have you thought about um, the other side of boxing? What we all talk about is what you're going to do after boxing, as in, you got a long career still ahead of you. We're not, we're not trying to cut that short. We still want to see plenty of your fights. Have you thought about what comes after? Have you been looking at, like, how do I invest my money? How do I make sure that once I leave boxing, I'm not in a position where I have to always be working. You may do, you may jump into punditry. I mean, everyone seems to have taken to that really well. But have you thought about life after boxing and sort of passive income, that kind of thing? Yeah, of course, you, you have to. Because at the same time, I gotta, I gotta provide for my family. But whether I make um, enough money to retire and sit back, I don't know, there's only a, I mean, a nerd point something percent of people that can Just do come, out, yeah, come out of boxing with and, and not work again. So, yeah, I w I'd love to be involved in boxing, whether it's managing, training fighters, punditry, because um, without boxing, I don't know what I'd do. I'm not gonna lie. It's uh, it's just, it's a part of my life, do you understand? Yeah. I, if I'm, when I'm at home, I can't sit still. I'm constantly thinking about boxing. So the only thing that takes me out of boxing is golf. So. Now and again, I'll play golf. On Are you a any good? I'm alright. I'm, I'm about 18 handicap, bogey golfer. Um, You're pretty good there. Yeah, so I'm alright. <laughs> I'm alright. Um, but that's the only thing that takes my mind away from boxing. So I think when I finish, I have to be involved in boxing some some way yeah. or somehow. I, I have to be involved. Otherwise, I'll go crazy. Well, there's plenty of avenues. You mentioned you could be an advisor. You know, we see a lot of people do it and. Who better? You obviously, you've seen it from all the way from the amateurs to here, so that may be your calling card, who knows. Um, you got a message for your sponsors, your family, people who are going to get behind you for this fight, because it's going to be a huge night in Wales. Yeah, for the people that are following and um, that are supporting, I just want to say a massive thank you. Please tune in, and um, if you haven't got your tickets, that is. If you've got your tickets, um, I'll see you on the night. If you haven't, Please go over uh, to the uh, zone and um, and tune in. Just basically sign up, tune in, and then for for my sponsors, I just want to say a massive thank you. I just reel them off here actually, so I got a few. Um, you got Jamie Burley, uh, Flat Roofing, um, Masoa for Men, Greenaway Autos, Celtic Manor. Uh, Glenn from Sourced in House, you've got Joe Portelli Projects um, in Malta, uh, Castor Sportsway, best in the business, obviously JD Sports, uh, Empire Pro Tape, David Lloyds, and um, yeah, I want to say a massive thank you to Tony, obviously, because he puts his time and effort into me. Um, obviously, my mom, my, my wife, and my kids when I'm home, they look after me. Um, my sister Jody, um, my mother Shirley. They sold my tickets. Um, so yeah, just a massive thank you to everyone uh, that helped me get to where I am today. And um, yeah, just make sure you tune in April 22nd. April 22nd, Joe Cardina looks to become two-time world champion. We wish him all the best. I'm sure everyone in the UK is going to get behind you. Uh, thanks for talking to Boxing Social. We'll catch up on Fight Week. Appreciate your time, Joe. Thank you, Cheers.